Do you all go to Tony, don't you? Uh, right. I, I recognise a few faces here. Ideal time for a bomb scout. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad you could all come. Uh, I guess there's been volumes written about the group in the press over the last year. Volumes and volumes. And I kind of wanted to tell you a few things about the tour. And maybe I figure you could ask me a few things that you'd like to know afterwards. And as well as that, for maybe we could lay to rest some of the rumours that have been, I'd like to think, uh, imaginatively created by uh, certain members of the press who will not even be here. <laughs> so listen, the other day I was on the phone um, to a journalist in America, and uh, I don't know much about us there yet, but the guy was very excited and looking forward to seeing the group in America and coming to play over there. And he was saying to me, what is it that's so special about Zig Zig Sputnik concerts that has made them so far in England all be sold out? I said, well, the reason why people want to come to our gigs is because they're special, because they're an event. They're the sort of gigs that I think that I went to when I went and saw groups like Roxy Music or David Bowie or Sex Pistols, where it was the actual being of the gig that was more, almost more important than just coming to hear the record. It was the thought of weeks before what you were going to wear, what it was going to be like, who was going to be there. You weren't coming for just music. And it seems, well, you know, maybe we've been forgetting that. The other reason is that he asked me, what is really the show like? And we've been spending the last three or four weeks talking about the show we're going to put on at these Odeons around the country and uh, places like Manchester Apollo and wherever else. And we've been talking about backdrops and show and how maybe it ought to be choreographed and it has to be a big show this time because a lot of people are paying a lot of money and you'll be sitting there and want to be entertained. The thing that makes these things funny different from other groups is it isn't a show. It's the real thing. When we come out, our music is really just like a projection of our personalities. I think that the group actually reflects what we're talking about in the songs. The kind of fantasy violence of films, sex, and whatever, technology. And so the, it's a projection of our personalities. The music is almost, how can I say, like a, a weapon when we play live on stage. It's the collectiveness of all five of us playing together and the interaction with the audience that makes it so special. The music is free form. It's not some choreographed show. It's not some pace show where we come on and uh, you know it has the fast number and the slow one. You play the single two numbers before the end, and then uh, you know the lights come up and the smoke and explosions. It's the real thing, and that's what makes it real special. And then the guy said to me, "Well, what are you doing now?" And I kind of thought for a minute and thought, "What I'm doing now." is going back on everything we ever said we do. We're actually going into Odeons and places and going to try and put on a show, which represents everything I always hated about rock and roll and everything that Zig Zig Sputnik was meant to be against. It was meant to be a kind of a total experience and something new. Every night it will be different. The music would never be the same. Because, I mean, it seems to me it's so boring that groups come out and for the last 10 or 20 years they come out and they play the same show every night. And if you're going to see them in Chicago or Birmingham or Manchester or wherever, the guitarist does the same number, plays the same solo, does the same strut at the front. And I always thought that was kind of old-fashioned. And the Zig Zig Sputnik was about something totally different to that. So it seemed to me what we were beginning to get involved in. And I don't know, I guess from the advice of record company people and from agents that we should play larger venues, we should go for an audience that's seated, we should go for an audience, what they call the crossover audience in the record business, where uh, you play to people who are just going to be sitting there and want to be entertained. And it seemed like suddenly we were becoming involved in that, something I never wanted to be involved in. Now, I know you're going to say, okay, you know, you're coming on here and saying, you know, this is all the bullshit because, you know, the ticket sales were low, as reported in various papers, whatever, around the country. But, I mean, on, on that, there's a couple of points. The, to start with, we're still talking about a tour that's three weeks away. On the last tour that was sold out around the country, we didn't sell the major amount of tickets to the last week before we even played the gig, and every one of those was sold out. We sold about the same amount of tickets that we sold on this tour, on the last tour at this stage in the game. And I think, you know, the, the people, the agents and things, still seem confident that they will sell a lot of tickets to those gigs. The other thing is, and I have to say that certain rumours in the papers that this group comes on stage and mines, 
and there have been so many articles that we come on stage and play to backing tapes. And I've read so many articles in the tabloid papers that say things like, the group left the stage in a hail of bottles and the music was still playing. Well, I have to tell you all right now that the group has never, ever mined on stage to backing tapes. And this is a rumour completely created by certain tabloid newspapers. And I have to say, it is hurting us. You know, if I was a fan, I wouldn't want to go and see a group that mined on stage. You know, and the rest of the people don't know. You know, the music papers sell, what, 100,000 copies every week. We're talking about circulation of major papers that kids up north read, and they're going to believe that stuff. You know, my mum believes it. And, I, you know, everybody else said, I don't believe what you read in the papers, but she believes it as well. And it is hurting us that people are saying that we mime on stage. It's ridiculous. There seems to be this myth that since we had a hit single, the first record that went to number three, there seems to be some kind of myth that we came on stage and that we never played in our lives and that this is some sort of poor creative group that went out on stage to try and recreate a record that was made by some kind of producer. People seem to forget that we played nearly 100 gigs around the country before we even signed to EMI Records. Why do you think the group has been rehearsing for the last five years so we're able to make the music that we do? Of course the group plays live. We never mind to backing tapes. So I'd just like to make that absolutely clear, once and for all. <coughs> and listen, for the reasons I outlined about those gigs, and the reason that the gigs were all so successful before, about the reason that the group was special, it was about something much more than music, that we'd always said in the press. Mm -hmm. If I was a Zig Zig Sputnik fan, I wouldn't go to these gigs that are on this tour. And so I came away from that phone call with the guy, thinking, there's just something wrong with it. I mean, I felt bad about it for a while, that something didn't seem right. We seem to be getting into a situation where people say, oh, you have to go through this tour because if you cancel it now, the press are going to kill you. You know, we're starting to play the game, something we've never, ever done. So I came away from the phone call and thought, this is just stupid. We have to cancel this tour. This is not right. I don't care what happens. We have to cancel it. It's not right. We can't go out and play these gigs. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to play, I think, maybe one or two or maybe even three proper gigs, large gigs around the country, gigs that are standing only. We're going to play the Albert Hall still. We're going to, I hope, set up one in the Midlands and one up there, where the gigs will be special events, where we can do all the things that we said we'd always do, like have walls of television monitors, have live television pumped through the speakers, interact with live television have TV screens, show films, have special other groups on with us as well. Make them special events, not just another rock and roll band going out and doing a big tour. So that's what we're going to do with those. We're also, over the next period, in about two or three weeks time, going to play a number of secret gigs around the country, which will let the fans who queued up for those tickets, who are the real fans, who went out and bought the tickets for the gigs week one, we're going to let them know where those concerts are going to be. And we're going to play those smaller venues the same way as we did before. And so it can be how it was. And I think we can get back on course. Also, because the people that queued up and bought the tickets, and a number of tickets have been sold at a lot of venues. In fact, a lot of venues have done very well. We're going to get the names and addresses of the people that bought their tickets, and we're going to send them a package, of a free T-shirt, and the information on the gigs we're going to play around the paper. I see, I don't see why we have to play the game anymore. We have to do it on our own terms. And so that's what we're going to continue to do. And the group isn't splitting up, and the album will be out as planned in a week and a half's time. It's called Flaunted. So that's about the story. <laughs>